We are excited to introduce you to our proposal to implement the Green Fast Track for Housing Type 2 rulemaking. This particular proposal is the result of the Building and Land Use Approval Streamlining Task Force, or BLAST, and the Get Stuff Built Report, which sought to reduce regulations and inefficiencies and speed up the creation of affordable housing, drive economic development and growth, and build stronger communities. First, we will give some background information on the need for the proposal and where it fits in with environmental review, then go into the proposal and how it would be implemented. The city is facing two monumental challenges, a climate crisis and a housing crisis. Unfortunately, outdated rules, including outdated environmental review rules, are making it harder to address either crisis. The best thing you can do to cut carbon emissions is to live in a city like New York. We have lower per capita carbon emissions than virtually anywhere in the country because of our density and access to transit. But our current environmental reviews do not encourage smart growth. At the same time, we aren't building nearly enough housing to meet the demand to live in New York City. Existing rules, which impose enormous costs and delay on modest housing projects, are standing in the way of building the housing we need. These costs and delays drive up the cost of individual housing developments, and the overall delay in supply drives up housing costs for everybody. In some cases, it makes it simply infeasible to build, even projects with HPD support. We are proposing to make it easier to build housing in New York City with a streamlined environmental review. Environmental review is important and we need to identify and mitigate the potential for significant impacts. But we looked at the last 10 years of projects and found that smaller projects consistently found no environmental impacts at all. That means that many projects are being forced to go through lengthy and expensive review even though there is a clear track record of not having negative environmental impact. It serves no environmental purpose and it's making it harder to build the housing we need to fight the climate crisis and the housing crisis. Now I will briefly review some background on the existing environmental review process before I introduce the proposal. As you know, there are three different types of actions in the City Environmental Quality Review Seeker. Type 1, Type 2, and Unlisted Actions. Type 1 actions are defined by the state and the city and require some environmental review because they may result in adverse impacts. They may or may not require an environmental impact statement. Type 2 actions are defined by the state and local agencies and are those that categorically do not result in adverse impacts. They do not require environmental review. Unlisted actions are those that do not fall into either bucket. They are typically smaller than Type 1 actions but also may or may not require a full environmental impact statement. Actions facilitating development projects require environmental review when discretionary approvals or permits are required from a city agency to facilitate development, the proposal requires city funding, or the proposal is being directly undertaken by a city agency. A seeker process for Type 1 or unlisted action is very complex and time intensive. An unlisted action typically takes two to three years to get through pre-certification, which includes the preparation of an environmental review, while larger Type 1 actions often have faster timelines because they often involve agency-backed priority initiatives. State regulations which create the framework for seeker at the city level authorize city agencies to adopt their own lists of Type 2 actions in addition to a state list. To include an action on an agency Type 2 list, the agency must establish that its action will not have a significant adverse impact on the environment under the criteria established by the state and that its action is not a Type 1 action as defined by the state regulations. Our proposal is to update the city list to allow more Type 2 actions, a new green fast track for environmental review. This proposal would create a streamlined path for small and medium-sized housing projects in New York City. It would increase predictability as well as time and cost savings for these projects while maintaining the existing public review process. Qualifying for a Type 2 pathway could cut the existing proposal's timeline by more than half. 
This would eliminate a barrier to more development of small and medium-sized apartment buildings, including affordable housing, and reduce waiting times for other projects that do not undergo environmental review. Now, we will discuss the details of the green fast-track proposal. This Type 2 pathway would only apply to projects that have a proven track record of no environmental impacts. DCP and partner agencies reviewed more than 1,100 projects with applications completed between January 2013 and May 2023 to determine which types of projects result in no impacts, the parameters that define those projects, and what other conditions projects would need to meet to preclude the possibility of impacts. The result is a proposed set of rules that define the green fast track eligibility that is supported by 10 years of projects that underwent environmental review. If projects satisfy all these requirements, they would qualify for the fast track and proceed directly to public review when the land use application is complete. The public would still have the opportunity to participate in community board, borough president, city planning commission, and city council review for Type 2 projects as required by the New York City Charter. In our review of past projects, we found that the most common environmental issues identified in review are either density-related or site-specific. Density-related issues are those due to the proposed size of the development in relation to its environment. These most often include issues related to transportation, community facilities, and construction. To avoid projects with the potential for density-related significant adverse impacts, the size of the projects eligible for the fast track had to be limited. Site-specific issues are those that stem from the development's location or context, no matter the proposed project. These most often include issues related to air quality, historic resources, soil conditions, noise, and resiliency. These issues are typically dealt with in the environmental review process by integrating components or commitments into the project such as e-designations, archaeological or architectural documentation and commitments, all electric energy consumption, and more. These types of components enable the projects to avoid impacts and receive negative declarations. The proposal would enable small to medium density apartment buildings across the city to access green fast track. The first set of criteria provide different size thresholds depending on the zoning district the proposed project is located in. For projects originating in R5 to R10 residential zoning districts or commercial and manufacturing districts, the threshold for eligibility would be a housing unit increment between 1 and 250 units and up to 35,000 gross square feet of non-residential uses such as retail or doctor's offices. Of this total non-residential area, a maximum of 25,000 gross square feet could be used for commercial and 25,000 gross square feet could be used for community facility. Projects originating in commercial or manufacturing districts would only be eligible if developed with a regulatory agreement or lease with a government agency to develop housing or a decision by the BSA to authorize residential development. This would ensure that applicants could not use this path to develop something other than housing in these districts. For projects originating in R1 to R4 residential zoning districts, the increment would be lower and only projects with up to 175 units and up to 25,000 gross square feet of non-residential uses would qualify. There would also be a limit of 10,000 gross square feet of commercial use and 10,000 gross square feet of community facility use. The fast track would support our climate goals, requiring buildings that use this path to forego fossil fuels and commit to electric heating, cooling, and hot water. This would avoid any air quality issues resulting from the new building. The fast track would also exclude projects located in special coastal risk districts. The fast track would also promote environmental justice, excluding projects near polluting sources. Projects adjacent to arterial highways or affected by sources of air pollution would not be eligible. It would also require buildings to meet health and safety standards if they are built in areas with high ambient noise or to remediate if there are hazardous materials on site with required documentation of site assessments. Project could satisfy these requirements either by establishing that there is no air quality, noise, or soil issues 
or by agreeing to an e-designation as they do now. These important environmental safeguards are some of the most common protections that result from the environmental review process and would remain part of the green fast track. The green fast track would also preserve safeguards to important elements of neighborhood character. It would preserve mechanisms for oversight from the Landmarks Preservation Commission with regards to historic resources including architectural and archaeological documentation and construction protection if necessary. The fast track would also exclude projects that are more than 250 feet tall and more than 50 feet tall and directly adjacent to an open space, natural resource or historic resource that is sunlight sensitive. Additionally, a project would not be eligible if it contains a natural resource. Projects would need to have less than 24 month anticipated construction to qualify. If projects meet these criteria and commit to the various safeguards described, then they would qualify for the green fast track and be exempted from environmental review. They would provide succinct and accessible documentation of eligibility and commitments and proceed with the public review process. If these rules have been in effect 10 years ago, approximately 12,000 new housing units could have been built more quickly and efficiently. This map shows the land area that would be potentially eligible based on the criteria described. In some of these gray areas, applicants would need to commit to noise or air quality protections to be eligible. Here are some examples of the scale and types of projects that may have qualified based solely on their location and size. These projects range from having 33 to 160 income restricted or supportive housing units. At the same time, they required environmental review, but their reviews did not result in any environmental impacts. So, how will this be implemented? As discussed previously, agencies have the ability to adopt their own Type 2 rules. City planning have been working on this expansion of the rules that define which projects are eligible for the green fast track. We have been in close coordination with our partner agencies that facilitate housing and that they are proposing the same rulemaking at the Board of Standards and Appeals, Department of Housing Preservation and Development, and the Mayor's Office of Environmental Coordination to make sure that all rulemakings are in alignment. The process that the city uses to adopt these rules is the City Administrative Procedure Act, or CAPA. The City Planning Commission will begin the CAPA process by publishing the legal text of the proposed rule in a supporting statement in the city record. These materials will also be posted to DCP's website with an EAS. We are asking for your approval to take this first step. The public would be then asked to comment on the proposed rules to influence how they are finally drafted. This would include a public hearing before the Commission. After the hearing and an opportunity to consider any comments, the Commission would vote on a final rule. If approved, a final rule would become effective after it is published again. We are developing tools to help applicant and DCP teams to identify eligible proposals as early as possible. Some criteria are geographically based and easily verified, while some will require confirmation of the proposed actions and determination of the development increment. All will require sign-offs from other agencies as well as LPC and DEP. These tools and procedures will be available and staff will be trained before the rule is effective. This proposal promotes environmental efficiency and equitable development addressing the city's housing needs across communities. Potential environmental concerns would be addressed through eligibility criteria and mitigation strategies. Environmental protections remain a priority. This proposal contributes to economic development, job creation, and housing affordability. The proposed changes are based on research and benefit both residents and the city. This proposal does not impact the public review process that projects must go through for zoning changes, special permits, and more public review will remain robust. Thank you and the team is prepared to answer any questions.